Babies are being born, mums are falling sick, and Jack Leach is currently undergoing an operation on his cartoon-level swollen knee. Stokes loses a test match by a million runs and complains about an umpiring system that has been around for ever? K.O. Raul plays, maybe? Jace Wilde becomes one of the 10 greatest Indian batters to ever play, and we witness the single greatest tweet pairing ever. And that is just, like, the off-field stuff. None of this includes the fact that England brings in their greatest modern-day batter and grinds him to the nub with the ball. Ashwin is taking fewer wickets than England spinners for ages, and no one knows who any of them are. And India only has one batter turning up for the first few innings, yet he nearly wins the series on his own. And any major test match event where we could question the timing of Virat Kohli's seaman delivery service and not his cover drive is probably going to be great, as we learned a few years ago. The numbers say 3-1, but within those simple digits is farce, beauty, chaos, anarchy, and romance. Numbers are not the best way to describe this series. We need emojis, verses, poetry, and interpretive dance. Sometimes you just need to take the slips out and bowl defensively. And you also need to be careful with your computer's defense as well. If you need a VPN, go Nord. NordVPN.com forward slash Kimber to get a two-year contract with a discount plus four extra months and gifts in some markets. It's completely risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. The link is in the show notes. So put in some dot balls and turn them into maidens via NordVPN.com forward slash Kimber. Close of play on day three, it feels like England is going to lose this series 4-1. Maybe 5-1? Two minutes after lunch, they have a chance of being 2 all. What kind of acid has this series been taking? It sways between narratives, like an excitable teen trying to tell you about the latest sweaty romance behind the bike sheds. There have been 155 test series played over five matches. Almost none of them have been two all coming into the final test. Our sport just makes it hard to play it down to the wire in one match, let alone two. By the time you get to like the fourth test match, something has probably gone wrong. But when Safra's count is out to leg slip, I allowed myself to believe that this could be a two-all series going into a magical fifth. But have I not already been entertained? The first test was absolutely off the chain. India is 150 runs in front with three wickets in hand at drinks on day two. The series could be over right there. Just a tidy little tail wag and some early wickets and Basball's eulogy would be written by all those desperate to stab at the corpse. But India folds quickly with the bat, which allows for England to come back into the match, only for the Bazballers to stumble and find themselves on day three, five wickets down and minus 27 in game terms. Then England's worst player of spin makes a moral 200 with a specialist keeper that not everyone wanted and kids who bat a little bit. But India still only needs 231 and is 42 without loss chasing it. Then 119 for seven. But there is a third twist, because they edge their way towards the total before eventually England wins by 28 runs. That match had more endings than Lord of the Rings. And how the hell did England just pull off one of the greatest comebacks ever with kid spinners, root bowling, and Ollie Pope doing almost all the batting work on his own? I mean, who had Tom Hartley dancing on tables after a seven-wicket haul for their series predictions? I mean, did anyone actually know who Tom Hartley even was? There are Lancashire members who are probably wondering why the Old Trafford social media kid is out in the middle wearing whites. And for the second test, it does look like a semblance of sanity will prevail. The previous win looks like it could be merely a blip, as the hosts are 172 runs in front with 10 wickets in hand. But it doesn't quite go as smooth as India third innings pickle themselves to add only another 226 runs. But that still means England will need to chase 399, though not against Ravi Jadeja. Because somehow Sir Ravi J remains the fittest, least fit man in cricket and has to sit out. But even so, you have more chance of chasing down the roadrunner after a knee operation than getting that kind of score on Indian wickets. But England are 95 runs one wicket down quicker than you can say, Ben Duckett is our tiny king. They had nighthawked India as well. So they still had all their non-openers ready to go. And the truth is, every single one of us knows this is impossible. But also, we have been so thoroughly basballed mentally that at 95 for 2, with their understudy Nighthawk leaving the crease, we honestly still think they have a chance. And as big as the upset was in the first test, maybe getting us to believe that this batting lineup would chase 399 against Boomer and Ashwin was a greater moment. Ultimately, though, they lose too many wickets. And all they get is one of those moral victories that they currently cherish, but soon will start to despise. 
The third test starts with Safras Khan's dad having the most emotional debut ever. But the match absolutely should never have felt close. India gets a big first inning score and there is no way England will bat long enough to ever get anywhere near it. You'd have to be a damn fool to think otherwise. Enter Ben Duckett. He bats like he gives absolutely no shits at all and he slap boxes India all around the park again. This time though, not a cameo, but the real deal. And it stumps on day two. England is almost 300 runs behind, but some people still feel the game is even. One of those people is R. Ashwin. And if that isn't amazing enough, he then pulls out of the match to look after his mum. That means two things. He is a great son, and that a lot of people have to read up on the ICC regulations in case India asks for a compassionate substitute. And it is worse for them because the night before, Jadeja bowls like he is actually still injured. Luckily for the hosts, Joe Root plays the worst shot an England batter has ever played, and yet curiously, not even his worst shot of the series. And because of this one failure, all of England's hopes and dreams end. India stays on top, and the only fun thing is Mark Wood going crazy as England has one of the biggest losses in Test cricket history while Jadeja takes a bag. Two things to unpack here, though. This is the same Jadeja that limped around while trying to bowl at the start of the match. But maybe more crucially, in the space of three tests, England has one of the greatest comeback victories ever in this sport. And then, one of the most crushing losses. All while Ben Stokes seems more worried about the umpire's call which usually has little impact on a 434-run loss. I mean, this series is going too hard. And we have not yet mentioned Yashasvi Jaiswal. By this stage, we are all looking up Don Bradman records. In the NBA, when Nikola Jokic does something crazy, you add the phrase, not since Wilt. And that is because Wilt Chamberlain tore the ass out of that league with now what kind of looks like made-up stats. Well, we might need a not since Don for Jaiswal as well. He already has a better conversion rate than the great man and a first-class average that is also in Bradman areas. I don't know if Don would have charged down the wicket to heave Jimmy Anderson out of the attack, but I'm sure he'd be pretty pleased with the rest of it. But in some ways, Jaiswal is truly inspired by England, so his runs are actually theirs. This is a baseball twist on root mass. Before the fourth test happens, we have another Kohli entering the world. Rayan Ahmed goes home and Jack Leach is under the knife. You can actually make a pretty good 11 of players not in these two teams. K.O. Raul, Virat Kohli's son, Virat Kohli, Harry Brook, Rishabh Bant, Akshar Patel, Jack Leach, Mohamed Shami, Jasper Bumrah, Rayan Ahmed and Anushka Sharma. And watching that team might have actually been more fun for England, who are basically out of the game at lunch on day one. Five wickets down, Ben Stokes has already spooked the wicket into rolling one along the ground. And then at lunch the following day, it is India in trouble having let Joe Root make 100 where he ghosts his own damn sweep shot. But all India has to do is bat normally. And by that I mean let Not Since Don smash another double hundred. I think he now has more of them than he does great backstory details. And then this series would be completely over. No, actually, Bazball would be over. It was mortally wounded in the previous match, but this will be the death rattle. But maybe Basball is a zombie, because I swear it has been killed 17 times, 12 of them in this series alone. So on day four, we are watching a bloke bowl more overs in one match than he ever has before. He's 20, he's in his eighth pro game, and he's on a hat trick, and nothing makes sense anymore. And Shoa Bashir is clearly another one in this series of great stories. When he was coming through in Surrey, Gareth Batty took a good look at him. He was England's former offie, and he chose two other finger spinners to give contracts that aren't Shoa Bashir. When that happens to a young player, even if they eventually make it to the test team, it is years later. Bashir doesn't have any years. He's spent longer waiting for a visa than he has actually playing cricket on a field. And look at who he's bowling to. Dhruv Jarrell. He comes in as a replacement for the replacement, and he bats like you would need to wrestle the cap from him, I don't know, at knife point. Oh, and what about his backstory? Ah, it's nothing really. It's just his mother had to sell her gold chain in order for him to buy a kit bag because the family had no money. Yeah. This series is more like one of those reality TV singing competitions. It is just one sad lost puppy after another, belting out a Mariah Carey song without a dry eye in the house. Oh, wait. But back to the actual cricket for a moment. England is gone at lunch on day one. India's gone in the third session of day two. England is gone at stumps on day three, and India is on the, the edge of gone a few balls after lunch on day four. Stick that up your momentum theories. Ollie Robertson is a batter now. That's cricket chaos. If I'm a win predictor, I'd ask for the next month off. It is going to be hard to explain this series in the future. A bit like the 2018 England-India contest. The scoreline tells you very little. This series is about morals and babies and mums and baseball and backstories. One day in the future when we only communicate in digital semaphores via our Musk brain chips, 
how do we store this series? Because good luck explaining the boomer ball to Pope, Ollie Robertson's hair, Judasia running out Safras, Ben Folks's catches, Cool Deep Yadda becoming an all rounder, and Joe Root ruining all cricket history with one shot. No, the Indian England series of 2024 cannot be summed up quickly, but its madness will stay with those of us who experienced it. Because we survived Baby Collie and the war on umpires' call. And all we have to remember it by is 3 1.